Alrighty, so we're back at it again for another week. It's Monday morning. Um, basically, first up today, I have a job. Um, it's so I came to this job and did a compressor change um, two weeks ago. I made a video on it. Um, basically, just a quick little summary. This particular customer, very nice person. Um, he's an electrician. He rang me up like I've, I've never had any contact with this customer or this unit ever he rang me up um, he diagnosed the compressor himself as being down to earth and it was tripping the breaker um, and that diagnosis was absolutely correct so he went out and bought a compressor um, and just asked me as a refrigeration mechanic to come out and fit it for him and the only reason he did all that was just to speed the process up he's not trying to be the refrigeration mechanic he's just um yeah trying to speed the process up so that was awesome um really good guy anyway so i came out and replaced the compressor and everything went to plan it was perfect um but when i turned it back on i realized that the pressures weren't great so it was acting like i needed to add more refrigerant to get to the right superheat however the head pressure was going up um so straight away, I realized, okay, this is the problem that caused the compressor to fail. So it wasn't just a matter of going out, replacing the compressor, and then that's it. I've said, we need to sort this out, or the new compressor will, will fail too. So a couple of things. One, I realized that the um, condenser, like the actual condensing unit, the coil was filthy, filthy. So that's been cleaned. He cleaned that. Um, they're not the easiest things to clean on the Actron units. And I'm back today. I'm going to reclaim the gas, um, check the accurators, but I'm going to remove the strainers, basically gas it up, put a new filter dryer in, and hopefully that sorts it out. And that's it. It'll be running perfectly at the right uh, head pressure, the right superheat, and brand new compressor away we go um but yeah i just the reason i didn't do that last time is because i'd never even seen the unit i just rocked up and the first thing i ever did to it the first time i ever saw it was to replace the compressor i didn't know what the conditions were prior to it um failing so i'll do that now get it done and then move on to the next let's go So all the gas is reclaimed. Just take the pressure out.
So how these things work anyway is there's a little seat in there, just there, and that basically when it's flowing seals it and then basically it can only go through that hole in the middle but when the flow is going the other direction it hits up and then it lets all the gas go through all these little slits in the side that lets way more gas through so basically when it's seated it can only go through the middle But when it's going the opposite direction, it can go all around the side and let's way more refrigerant through. So basically, that goes in there like that. That goes in there like that. seats in and you get that nice and good and thread it up all right so basically I have just taken that off taken the accurator out and it's never the accurator that's blocked but it's always the strainer which is normally located up here However, I've just taken it off, and to my surprise, oh, to my surprise, there is no strainer up there. This is nothing. Normally there's a strainer there, so that's a bit odd. Anyway, so I'm gonna go and go up in the roof, check the, see if there's a strainer on the indoor and um, check that out. But also I want to make sure that this is actually working. This is a digital compressor. And what it has is that discharge goes to a solenoid valve straight into um, the suction. And they call that capacity control. So if that's not um, like, cutting in and out then you'll get a higher discharge pressure and temperature so basically going to make sure that's working fine basically just got to work out why this thing is running at such a high um, head pressure and, temp and discharge pipe temp so anyway I'm gonna drop in the roof now and see if there's a strain on the inside all right so I've just been up in the roof and um, up in the roof, it's the same deal, same thing. And it also doesn't have a strainer, which is very odd. So I wasn't expecting that. But what I did find, which is very weird, is on the indoor unit, it has an accurator, as a metering device, but it also has an electronic expansion valve as well. So. I have never seen a unit that has two different metering devices, like an EXV and an Accurator. So that is very odd, I've never seen that ever. So anyway, I'm just going to um, change this dryer over, get this thing on vac, and um, I'm going to actually give Actron a call and just ask them what the go is with having two separate metering devices. Seems a bit weird to me, but anyway. Um, I'll do that and fill you in. Basically, um, what I found out was that 
this um, obviously meters for the heating side but they've also got a um, accurator up in the indoor unit and an um, electronic expansion valve now according to the Actron guys they said the actual like piston for the accurator is a lot bigger on the indoor unit so it doesn't actually do too much it's mostly being metered on via the electronic expansion valve so when it's on cooling the electronic expansion valve is metering in um, sync with this digital compressor and this solenoid valve you know coming in on and off um, to regulate the capacity so basically um, when it's on heating mode that electronic expansion valve just goes all the way open so I've never actually seen that before but then again this is a digital compressor so um, basically what I'm going to do now is finish gassing this up I'm going to turn it on I've already confirmed that the electronic expansion valve is fine I've checked for um, I've checked the resistances of the EXV that's all good um, however last time from memory I don't really remember this coming on and off so I've tested the valve with my magnet that's sweet so now when I turn it on I want to um, make sure because for the first two minutes this thing will be going on and off on and off on and off I want to make sure that's actually um, opening and closing because if it's if it's not then the electronic expansion valve is doing stuff up in the roof thinking that that's actually working when it's not and that can be causing those wigged out pressures that we had so that's the plan right, it's 6.8 stopped it this has a factory charge of 6.8 kilos <laughs> Alright, so basically this thing is absolutely purring now. All I've done is just change that, change the dryer, and I've just way charged the right amount in. I'll explain that in a second. But we're just going to do an experiment. So basically this has been running purring for like 20 minutes. Absolutely running perfectly. Um, if you put the um, set temperature within, Four degrees of the room temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Yeah. If you do that, um, this thing will start loading and unloading. So we're going to do a test now.
complete. So, proficient. Okay, so all done. This is cycling on and off now. That is absolutely stuffed. So that coil is not working. So basically what caused that compressor to fail was um, this was completely blocked the first time I was here. Head pressure was up. We're in Western Sydney, so it gets hot. And this is designed to cycle on and off to, to take the load off the high side um, or the high pressure, but it wasn't. It's trying to, but that isn't actually energizing. So basically it never was, and it basically burnt out the compressor. The compressor's been replaced. That's been cleaned and it's like brand new now. But that isn't working, so that's the culprit. Well, the, what caused that to burn out was a dirty coil and also this cyanide coil. But um, everything's all good now, it's gassed up perfectly. That um, needs to be replaced. But in the interim, well, until we get that, you can just turn the set temp down on the wall controller and basically it just runs um, basically direct online. So like the um, EXV will just stay at a constant state and this has stopped ticking in and out because it's just gone and done it now so that's the job done finished on to the next let's go